The fourth type of clamps used with uh, fixtures and jigs are cam action clamps. These clamps do not apply heavy clamping force, so they are used uh, with the machining operations where small vibrations are produced, or in other words, they are used for light to medium duty machining operations. There are three basic cam types uh, used for clamping mechanisms. We have eccentric cam action clamps, we have flat spiral, and we have cylindrical. First, we will see eccentric cams. These cams apply the clamping force with the action of an eccentric circle. So you can see there is a hole uh, that is not uh, made at the center of this cam. So we are having this eccentric circle. And these cams have uh, only one true locking point. So that is very important. So that locking point is the point at which the vertical center line of the centric mounting hole and the lobe are perfectly aligned and exactly perpendicular to the clamping surface. So uh, this is the centric hole or the mounting hole, this one. So when a vertical line passing through the center of this uh, mounting hole and the line passing through the center of the, of the cam lobe, uh, they are perfectly aligned, just in this case, shown in the figure. And these two lines are perpendicular to the surface being clamped. So this is the true locking point, and this is the only locking point for this cam. Now, if you move this cam beyond this point in either direction, it will loosen. So that is a very important point regarding these uh, eccentric cams. So because of this reason, these eccentric cams should usually not be used for clamping because they do not provide positive locking. The second type of cam action clamps are using spiral cams. Spiral cams are the most common style of cam clamps used for jigs and fixtures. Rather than using an eccentric circle as was in the case of eccentric cams, this cam has an involute curve on the clamping face of the cam. So this design provides a wide range of clamping positions instead of one, uh, just one uh, locking position or clamping position as was in the case of an eccentric cam. So this is an example of a spiral cam. So it has an involute curve, uh, this one. And because of this shape, this involute shape, this, this cam has a longer locking range. So you can see this uh, dotted line is showing the locking range. Here is an example of a cam directly holding a part. So this is a direct pressure spiral cam clamp. So it is directly holding the work. Uh, using uh, the cam action at this point. And here is the example of indirect pressure spiral cam clamp. So basically it is a strap clamp, but instead of having a screw here in order to lock the clamp, we are using a spiral cam. So we can move the handle in either direction to lock or unlock uh, the clamp. So depending upon the, um, of, of the size of the workpiece, uh, we can use a certain point on the involute of the cam to, to, to lock the workpiece. So this is the clamping point. Practically, the indirect clamping is preferred over direct clamping in order to avoid any, any damage to the surface of the workpiece. Uh, but you can find other examples of the use of uh, this spiral cam clamp to hold the workpiece in fixtures and jigs. The third type is the cylindrical cams. These are used in some jigs and fixture applications. They actuate the clamp by a lobe or through a groove cut into the surface of the cylinder. So the shape of the cam is cylindrical, just like this, and it, it is having a slot. And by rotating the cam, we can move uh, the clamping rod, uh, rods up and down to hold or unhold the work.
but practically these uh, spiral cam clamps are more commonly used. But as a whole, uh, the cam clamping doesn't provide heavy forces clamping and should be used only where the vibrations during machining are small and cutting forces produced are not too heavy. <laughs>